join us for a couple of moments on Double Jab uh, Radio on a Friday night. How are you, Emmanuel? Yeah, I'm doing great. And yourself? Uh, we're doing real well. Appreciate a couple of moments. And uh, last night had the opportunity to catch a lot of the action uh, in Bristol, PA. And obviously you made quick work of your opponent. Um, you know, I think a lot of people forget you know, some of the opposition that you fought over the last several years, whether it was Algeria or Mayfield or Broner or Orozco, you come back, you lose a couple of those, but you come back against Acuna, you come back against um, Aguilera last week. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about that bout against Carlos and the fact that it seemed as though you were going to be aggressive from the get-go. You wanted to put him out of there from the get-go, and that was kind of your mindset. Uh, talk about that early, that early stoppage and that win. All right. Um, well, first, um, I was trying to figure him out the first couple rounds. Um, I had to uh, I had to get used to um, his style. He was a little awkward. He threw punches from everywhere. So um, I had to get used to him the first couple rounds. And then and uh, my coach told me, um, go um, use my jab more in that third round to make my way to the body. So that's what I did in that, um, in that last round. I used my jab more to get my way to the body, and um, I got the stoppage in the third round. Is it something where it, it does seem as though sometimes boxers forget to use the jab because they're always looking uh, to go for the home run. They're always looking to go for the knockout. I mean, uh, you got to have patience in that regard, right? And especially if your opposition's not giving you that opportunity to use it, you still got to kind of force the issue, right? You got to keep it there. You got to get that stick out there. You got to use it to bait them a little bit. And you know this, your jab basically uh, is your best defense, which ultimately is going to set up some offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, the jab is definitely the key. You know, um, you're right. A lot of boxers tend to forget to use it because they'll be in a rush to get them out of there and just throw with punches in it and without using a jab. But the jab is definitely the key to set things up for them bigger shots. So um, during this camp, for this fight, we're going um, work, we're working on using our jab more to um, – um, set more um, things up and look for more openness by using our jab. Uh, I, I look at that fight as not get rounds in or get your feet wet, but I looked at it as uh, an opportunity for me, maybe as you alluded to, uh, to work on a couple things. Uh, with that being said, you know, you look at your last two fights. Do, do you do you take those fights as okay? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get some rounds in. If the knockout happens, the knockout happens. Like sometimes, I guess the question is, sometimes when you have that type of easy bout, uh, I don't know how much you can take away from it. But say your last two fights, you made quick work or your opposition. Did, what are you able to take from those two wins after you lost two in a row and that you can build upon going forward? Um, basically, um, just... Uh, um a good question <laughs> I mean is there anything that you saw that if you go back and, and, and you watch the fight or you go back and, and, to train in a week or two where your camp's going to tell you okay listen uh, you know again be more consistent with that jab uh, move around a little more square up a little more fight in the pocket uh, because again I, I, I look at Sometimes those type of fights, I mean, let's be honest, you know this, right? I mean, you, at, at your size and your length, right around 5'7", five, 5'8", five, or so, uh, it could have been a good opportunity for you to get a little rounds in. But if it's there, you, you take it and you make a statement because ultimately a win is a win. And I'm just wondering going forward, you know, are, are we going to see you kind of go back to those top tier opponents that we saw maybe over the last year or so? Because you were fighting... A lot of good opponents. I mean, you talk about some of the es uh, upper echelon in that weight class. Uh, you were taking on these guys left and right. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, um, in, the, in them last two fights, in them out, um, I definitely was looking to get more rounds in. But my the first one when I fought Acuna, yeah, um, I went I went to, um, six. Yep, I got him, I got him out of there in the sixth round. It was scheduled for eight, so that was that was a little good rounds in. I, you know, I, I still felt good in that fight. You know, my time was on. Um, I felt real good, actually. And this third, and um, this is the last one last Saturday. Um, I still felt good, and um, I, I, was, I was looking to get more rounds in, but um, it looks like I had got I got them out of there early. I wanted to get more rounds in, but um, the stoppage came, so I took I took I took um, I took advantage of it. You know, um, I got to do what I got to do in the ring. You know, I, I would like to go to the distance, but things happen in the ring. Hey, no one's falling you for getting a quick stoppage. <laughs> <laughs>
you can't apologize for that. What what did you learn? Uh, because when you really started to step up, and even when it goes back to the Brewer fight about what five years ago, I think 2011, uh, mm-hmm. you sprinkle that in right with a couple wins here and there, and then you had the fight against Algeri, and then the Mayfield, and then the Broner fight for the WBA International Super Lightweight Title. You know, a couple of those losses. A lot of times, people just they, they're so they're so enamored with records in boxing, and I think records don't always tell the tale. I don't always think they tell the whole story. Uh, they can't really encapsulate a boxer's career. Uh, with that being said, you know, a couple of those losses, what were you able to take away from? What what type of learning experience uh, did you did you gain from those losses? No, I never lost. It's just a, it's, a, it's just a learning experience to me. Um, basically, um, I stepped up and. Um, I stepped up in the competition. You know, I learned a lot, a lot from that Bonner fight. Yeah. Whole 12, I went to whole 12 rounds. You know, it's, you got, you can set up a lot more things when you win them, them 12 rounds on fights. You look, look, look for a lot of openings, you know, um, set something up, like, say, round six. And then round eight, it'll be opened up for to throw the shots. You know, um, and them 12-round fights, it's, it's, real, it's, it's real helpful. So um, as, as my career going forward, you know, I got the advantage. You know, um, I really I got the um, advantage of everything. You know, because I've been I've been I've been them rounds. I've been deep in the mortars. I've been 10, 10, 12 rounds in the um in the in the ring with them guys. So um, I, I learned a lot, a lot. I, re- I really learned a lot when I fought Adrian Bronner. So that really opened up a lot of doors for me, and um, it showed me the way in them in them live in them deep rounds. Well, you're right. I mean, you're, you you certainly, when you go in deep waters, as you just mentioned, uh, you do certainly learn a ton. Again, a couple minutes with uh, Emmanuel Taylor joining us on a Friday night edition of Double Jab Radio right here on 1360 WNJC. Rich Canyon is here. All right, when you look at, when you look at uh, the division super lightweight, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it is stacked. I mean, whether it's Crawford, Broner, Molina, Garcia, um, you know, you're right up there as well, Mauricio Herrera. Um, it is a stacked division. Um, what What's next for you? When do you want to get back in the ring? When do we suspect to see you again? And, uh, you know, to close out the year, how active are you looking to be? Because ultimately... You're going to have to get some better opposition. You know this. I mean, better opposition, then all of a sudden you keep moving up in the rankings. You try to get a world ranking, and then boom, you're right back where you were a couple of years ago. So talk a little bit about your future going forward. All right. Um, so uh, September 3rd, I'll fight Jose, uh, Ho- Jose Sapita, something like that. Okay. Um, he's ranked number um, two in the WBO. So um, after this win, which I know, I'm gonna, I, know I can beat him, beat the guy. So after I get this win, I'll I'll be uh, I'll take a spot and be ranked number one in the WBO. So I believe that will be my last fight of, of this year. Um, starting at the beginning of next year, since I'll be ranked number one in the, um, in, the in the world, the sky's the limit from there. Um, you know, uh, Terence Crawford got the WBO, and I'll be next in line for that. So hopefully, I'll get that shot with him in, um, next year. So, so just again there, uh, to, to confirm, so Jose Zapata, uh, the kid's out of uh, Long Branch, California, I think 25-1. and one. He's got some good knockout power, 21 knockouts. Uh, again, I don't have the ranking right in front of me, um, but I know he did, uh, he did fight uh, Alfaro, uh, and I'm just pulling it up, and a couple other notable uh, fighters as well, Diaz, uh, Robles, Vasquez. So that, that fight is confirmed for September, you said, Emmanuel? Yes, it's confirmed from September 3rd in Arizona. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, how many rounds is that going to be? It's going to be a 10-rounder, 10-round ten ten fight. Do you, any early scatter report on him? Um, not really. What, you, what, um, what do you mean? Did, uh, what, have you watched any film? Have you watched any video on him thus far? When, when, was, this, when was this actually made? Was, was this confirmed this week or something that just transpired? Or It was actually confirmed last month um, when I was getting ready for my fight. August sixth, it was confirmed like a week, a week after I figured, after I found out I was fighting August sixth. Okay. So as I was getting ready for that fight, and um, that's when I heard I'm fighting September third as well. Okay. So I was right back in the gym after that August sixth fight. So uh, I, I am curious. Do you watch any uh, video on the guys that you fight, or you leave that up to your management team? You watch any YouTube or footage or anything? Um, I, I, I'll, I'll skim through it a little bit. <laughs> I, I look at it for like a round or two, and then that's it. 
And then uh, my coach, he 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 really did does the study, and he really looks at the guy and figure out a game plan to beat the guy and things like that. So I'll go by his word, and I'll just listen to what he got to say, how to beat the guy, and then we'll go from there. But other than that, I'll just look at like one or two rounds of the guy, and that's about it. So you definitely have your eyes on uh, a Garcia and or Crawford, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely in the near future. You know, I want all the, all the top guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, they say one fight at a time, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. They do say that. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I'm not. I'm not going to hold you. I appreciate a couple moments on this Friday night. Uh, glad we got to hear too that you got that fight in September third. Uh, we'll make a note of it. We'll obviously uh, get you back on before that fight and then certainly after. But I appreciate a couple time, a couple moments on a Friday night. All right. Thank you. I appreciate everything. All right, you got it, Emmanuel Taylor, joining us for a couple months. So there, you heard it.